Welcome to St Matthew's Bruthen, where it is a wet, cold and rainy day. We're recording the service today, even though we're having face-to-face -face services outdoors tomorrow. We expect uh, that some of you will not be able to come to those services because of the weather or because you're still in an area of lockdown. So let's go over to St Matthew's for a service of prayer and praise. Welcome again everybody to this service of prayer and praise at St Matthew's Brutham for Sunday the 25th of October 2020 during the COVID-19 restrictions. Our first hymn is In Christ Alone. Christ 
our Lord. Amen. We now turn to the ministry of the Word, and first we pray. Thank you, Father, for making yourself known to us and showing a way of salvation through faith in your Son. We ask you now to teach and encourage us through your Word, so that we may be ready to serve you for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading. The readings may be found in your service sheet and uh, you may wish to pause the tape now or the video now and read them yourselves. The readings are from Deuteronomy chapter 34 verses 1 to 12 which talks about Moses dying and being buried in the land of Moab. Then Psalm 90 verses 1 to 6 and 13 to 17 and that talks about God's eternity and human frailty. The New Testament reading is from the letter to the Thessalonians, the first letter, chapter 2, verses 1 to 13, and it talks about Paul's ministry in Thessalonica. I will now read from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 to 46. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment of the law? Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and a second is like it. Love your neighbour as yourself. All the, law, all the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. While the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them, What do you think about the Messiah? Whose son is he? The son of David, they replied. He said to them, How is it then that David, speaking by the Spirit, calls him Lord? For he says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one could say a word in reply, and from that day on, no one dared to ask him any more questions. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbour as yourself. So proclaims the ancient teaching well before Jesus' time and reaffirmed once more by Jesus. How does such love begin? Writer Kathleen Norris tells the story of a friend named Willie who had fallen in with a drug dealer and dreamed up a scheme to make a lot of money. Willie thought that things were working out well. He was making good contracts, setting up a network. But one day he and the drug dealer colleague were driving down the road when the drug dealer saw a man travelling in the opposite direction. I need to kill him, said the dealer, quite matter-of-factly, reaching for a gun that was hidden under his front seat. It was then, right then I decided to get out, Willie said, badly shaken. I was in over my head. And that, concluded Kathleen Norris, is where the path to love and salvation begins. In the sudden awareness that a particular path 
is leading to death. In the naming of something that is wrong and taking steps to get away from it, the saints are people who have flirted with sin like Paul of Tarsus or Francis of Assisi. They come to that, that awareness at that time. The saints are those who heard today's gospel as if for the first time and embrace that truth that the love of God and neighbour are the real directives of life and humbly realise that they have a long way to go. When the poet Maya Angelou appeared on TV a few years ago, she was asked about her lifetime goals. She answered, I want to become a Christian. This surprised the show's host who asked, but aren't you already a Christian? To which the poet replied, when people come up to me and say that they are Christians, I think, oh my, already? To become a saint, a Christian, is, or a Christian is an ongoing process. And it happens to, in the way Rabbi Harold Kushner points out. When people ask me, where is God? I tell them I would rather rephrase the question to, when is God? God is there when we love him and our neighbour. As in this story, a woman was in great distress because she had lost the sense of God in her life. Why doesn't God make me feel that he is there? If only I could feel him, know that he touched me. And the old woman to whom she was complaining said to her, Pray to God, ask God to touch you. He will put out his hand to you. The woman closed her eyes and began to pray earnestly. And suddenly she felt the hand of God touching her. She cried out, He touched me! and went into an ecstasy of joy. But then she paused and said, But you know, it felt just like it was your hand. And the old woman replied, Of course it did. It was my hand. It was? Sure, what do you think God would be doing? Did you think he would stand a long arm out of heaven to touch you? He just took the hand that was nearest and used that. Like the woman, the story of a woman who, during the course of earning her master's degree, found it necessary to commute several times a week from a country town to the university, a good hundred kilometres away. Coming home late at night, she would see an old man sitting by the side of her road. He was always there in sub-zero temperatures, in stormy weather, no matter how late she returned. He made no acknowledgement of her passing. The snow settled on his cap and the shoulders and his shoulders as if he were merely another old tree. She often wondered what brought him to the same spot every evening. What stubborn habit, private grief or mental disorder. Finally she asked the neighbour of hers, Have you ever seen an old man who sits by the road late at night? Oh yes, said the neighbour. Many times. Is he a little touched upstairs? Does he ever go home? He's no more touched than you and me, her neighbour laughed. And he goes home right after you do. You see, he doesn't like the idea of you driving by yourself out late all alone on those back roads. So every night he walks out to wait for you. When he sees your tail lights disappear around the bend, and he knows you're okay, he goes home to bed. Just like the story of a woman, both a divorced and an unwed mother, who in the 1920s worked for a series of left-wing publications and lived a bohemian lifestyle. Then one day she realised that she was in over her head, and so in 1927 she, of all people, became a Christian, a Catholic Christian and then led a quiet rebellion within the church to reach out to the poor, the needy and the desperate. She was a pacifist, an anarchist and a crusader for social justice, not your run, usual run of the mill saint. In right, right now her name is in fact being processed for canonisation, even though in her life 
she perceptively said she didn't want to become a saint because in her words she didn't want to be dismissed that easily. Which is to say, once you put, put the label saint to a person's name, we say, oh well, he or she could do those things because after all, they were saints. But that's not for me. She didn't want people to think that she was what she said, what, that what she did was extraordinary because she did, loving God and neighbour. What she did, loving God and neighbour, was in fact to be the ordinary way any Christian should live. She protested that loving God and neighbour wasn't meant to be unusual or artificially elevated to the stuff of sainthood, out of the reach of ordinary people. It was simply that every Christian, everyday Christians were meant to be. This woman was named Dorothy Day. You may know of her. The law and the prophets, Jesus said, are summed up in loving God and neighbour. This is not something over and above daily life, but the very heart of daily life. The springboard for our actions, the basis for our decisions the grounding of our prayer life, the motivation of our careers, the purpose of our being here to begin with. I suspect that if people today have trouble discovering where God is, it is because they have not experienced when God is. The Gospel invites us to show them. Amen. We now have a hymn for reflection called God's Love for Man. He 
So let us affirm our faith. We believe in one God who made and loves us all. We believe in Jesus Christ who was born, lived, and died and rose again and is coming to call all to account. We believe in the Holy Spirit who calls, equips and sends out God's people and brings all things to their true end. This is our faith, the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We now turn to the Confession. Let us now confess our sins to Almighty God. Heavenly Father, you have loved us with an everlasting love, but we have broken your holy laws and have left undone what we ought to have done. We are sorry for our sins and turn away from them. For the sake of your Son who died for us, forgive us, cleanse us and change us. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live for you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Prayers As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen and the prayer of the day. O God, whose Son has taught us that love is the fulfilment of your law, stir up within us the fire of your Holy Spirit, and pour into our hearts your greatest gift of love, so that we may love you with our whole being, and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, your love for your children is without end, and you teach us to love you in return. Hear the prayers we bring for all people. We pray for the peoples of the world, for our neighbours whose lives are made miserable by poverty, homeless, oppression or war. Help us to struggle for justice and peace with wise minds, courageous hearts, and souls that thirst for righteousness. O God, teach us to love you, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your worldwide church, for our neighbours of other traditions and faiths, for those with whom we eat at your table, and for all who seek to know you. Help us to wrestle with your gospel with inquiring minds, burning hearts, and souls at thirst for truth. O oh God, teach us to love you, and in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all in this community, for our neighbours with whom we live and work and play, 
for all who are disadvantaged, for our families, our friends and for ourselves. Help us to persevere to build true community with enlightened minds, welcoming hearts and souls that thirst for reconciliation. O oh God, teach us to love you and in your mercy hear our prayer. We pray for all in trouble or distress, for our neighbours whose lives are filled with grief or despair, loneliness, sickness or pain. Help us to reach out to those who need us with understanding minds, generous hearts and souls that thirst for compassion. O oh God, teach us to love you and in your mercy hear our prayer. We pray for your faithful servants of every age, for all who have followed your law of love. Expand our minds, inflame our hearts and seduce our souls, that we too may worthily love you, and at our life's end raise up to, us up to share with you in glory. O God, teach us to love you and our neighbours as ourselves. Loving God, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The blessing. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. The final hymn, May the Peace of God.